And warm greetings uh, to all the Architects Diary members, our honorable panelists of today's webinar, and all the viewers who have joined us today. Uh, I'm architect Kamala Shatambuli, editor of the Architects Diary, and I welcome you all on behalf of my entire team to the third edition of TAT Dialogue Series 2023. And I uh, genuinely thank you all for dedicating your time uh, from your busy schedules in joining us for this initiative today. Uh, so just a quick uh, you know, brief introduction about the Architects Diary. Uh, founded and managed by a team of architects themselves, the Architects Diary has become one of the most visited architectural websites in India and is committed to featuring the best of architecture and interior design projects. Established in 2016, we envisioned the Indian creative community in a digital space, which was then abundant and unexplored. So thanks to the 55,000 architects and designers who believed in us and uh, chose us for their project publication, we now have a monthly digital footprint of 250 million plus on our effortfully built website and social media platforms with more than 18,000 people visiting our sites daily. Uh, we as a media house uh, consider ourselves as the important pillars of the nation, working tirelessly every day, trying to uplift the designer's community and showcase the best of curated Indian works to the global audience. Uh, we aspire to bring in the highest changing tide in this vast sea of information and knowledge. And we humbly wish for you all to be a part of this change with us. Uh, so. Uh, we, like, you know, every month uh, we organize this TAD dialogue series, uh, which are inclusive of panel discussions, interviews, presentations, and talk series by renowned architects, interior designers, uh, even architectural photographers, and uh, influential people from all walks of the design and technology field, uh, based on, uh, you know, meticulously curated and uh, trending themes in each session, uh, we try to invite speakers uh, of course, they are editorially uh, selected, our editorial team selects them, and uh, we try to invite them and honor them uh, to be a part of such webinars. And we believe in the power of dialogue, uh, you know, as a media house, uh, getting the right answers from the right people is what this series is all about. Uh, so the Architects Diary's exclusive members tribe, consisting of around, uh, you know, 10,000 plus design homes, uh, with a viewer count of 100 plus audience, definitely go home with extraordinary takeaways and information add-ons. Our enthusiastic editorial team is always on the lookout for trending, innovative, and inspiring design-relevant topics that direly need to be addressed and shared with our ever-curious community. And conducting this series is also uh, somewhere helping us to create a go-to library uh, for the design fraternity where every question is answered. And with this initiative, it's our vision to create a universal yet distinctive source of information beneficial for one and all. So um, today, uh, we are all gathered here to celebrate World Landscape Architecture Month, which is globally observed and celebrated every year throughout the month of April. So this inspiring profession, staunchly working towards, uh, work towards designing healthy environments and communities, and protecting the health of health and safety and the welfare of the people. Our panel today uh, is graced by dynamic architects, as you all are seeing, uh, from all over India, leading their forms and practicing landscape architecture on interior architecture and even urban level. So landscape architecture, uh, you know, it in, uh, involves design, planning, and management of spaces, including parks, gardens, campuses, urban plazas, waterfronts, and even other public and private spaces. Uh, and it, uh, you know, they design with an aim to create functional, attractive outdoor environments that are sustainable, resilient, and responsive to the needs and aspirations of the communities that they serve. And with respect to India, I think it's a very, very challenging field. So uh, I would say the field uh, draws on a variety of disciplines, including uh, art, ecology, engineering, and even urban planning. So uh, I would say landscape architecture practitioners use their knowledge of their fields to design outdoor spaces that, not, that are not only visually pleasing, but also functional and environmentally sustainable, which is a very hard balance to create. And uh, you know, they also consider factors such as site conditions, topography, climate, and water resources, as well as social, cultural, and economic considerations. 
and landscape architecture in India is uh, uh, quite a growing field that is gaining increasing recognition and importance in the country's urban and rural development as well. So our country's uh, you know, rapid urbanization has created a need for a dire need for architects finishing in uh, landscape architecture who can design and manage public spaces that are functional, attractive and sustainable. So uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, you all to today's members uh, of the panel uh, who have graced us. So I would uh, first like to uh, welcome uh, architect Sunit sir. So architect Sunit Mohindru is an architect by education and an educator by passion. He founded Oracle's uh, multidisciplinary design practice with a view to amalgamate intense theoretical background and passionate rigor. Its foundations lay in its vision as an organization that would not only serve its patrons to deliver the highest standards of professional work, but also provide a fertile ground to foster aspiring individuals to develop and contribute collectively to the profession. So architect Sunit sir has been associated with several institutions as a visiting professor, uh, advisor, and even juror. He also leads the studios and lectures for site planning at the Department of Urban Design. Uh, I heartily welcome you, sir. And uh, next, uh, we have architect Deepti Sharma Ma'am. So Deepti Sharma Ma'am is the uh, co-founder and the principal architect at Earthscapes, along with architect Sandeep Patil, sir. Earthscapes uh, is a you know, landscape architectural uh, consultancy firm located in Mumbai, which specializes in landscape architecture uh, and design, site planning and management strategies landscape engineering, and natural resource management. Architect Ditti is an experienced landscape architect with a demonstrated history of working in the architecture and planning industry. Uh, she is skilled in landscape planning, master planning, design research, and urban landscape. Uh, again, I would uh, thank you, ma'am, for raising our panel today. And uh, so next, we have architect uh, Harsh Pote, sir. Uh, he co-founded uh, Penta Space Design Studio. It's a Mumbai-based firm, uh, along with architect Gaurav Sanghi. Uh, Penta Space specializes in the Indian real estate market, spanning luxury and affordable housing, hospitality, retail, industrial, and commercial projects. Uh, architect Harsh, Harsh is responsive to clients changing needs and industry trends as he designs buildings that are enduring in their quality, function, and beauty. Uh, his commitment to completing projects with a stipulated budget without compromising the, on the architectural aesthetics is an inspiration for the company and the team that looks up to him. Uh, thank you, sir, for gracing our panel today, and I welcome you. Um, uh, next, uh, we have architect Ankur Jajpuriya, sir. He leads Studio Aspire, uh, a landscape architecture firm in Jaipur, Rajasthan. Uh, Ankur sir is a graduate in architecture from Ayojan School of Architecture, Jaipur, and is a postgraduate in landscape architecture from SEPT University, Ahmedabad. Uh, he has a diverse portfolio of experience from working in different landscape architectural firms in Ahmedabad, Pune, Delhi, and Dubai before establishing his own firm in 2018. He has been awarded internationally in designing of show gardens in Japan Garden Show and uh, again in an international flower show in 2021. So uh, again, uh, and he also uh, I would like to, I, I'm pleased to inform you that he'll be moderating today's uh, panel discussion. So thank you, Ankur sir, for being a part of this and uh, moderating this panel. And so this is a month to uh, you know, honor landscape architecture and landscape architects throughout the world who play an important role in creating and maintaining the built environment that uh, impacts on the quality of life for individuals and communities. And uh, today we are going to address some of the uh, you know, very less discussed or talked about of the field. And uh, so I think let us uh, initiate uh, today's panel discussion. Uh, Ankur sir, I would like now like to hand over the panel to you as the moderator uh, to take it further. Thank you, Kamalaja. Uh, am I audible clearly? I hope. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. Thank you, Kamalaja, for introducing us all. And thank you for giving me an opportunity to moderate the panel. I think it's nothing like moderation. It's like I'm only medium. I'm only a medium to initiate an interaction on this diverse field of landscape architecture. 
so i welcome you all i welcome everyone to this uh, interesting discussion about landscape so going to the right from the start i i think we should put forward a main question like what is landscape architecture to everyone i mean i'm asking the panelists what is the what do you mean by landscape architecture and what is your personal view about it so um if i may uh, start with uh, sunil sir i would like you to please uh, go ahead and address this thing well uh, it means many different things for different people for me uh, there are two words which go with it one is life and the other is landscape architecture so i would say that this is my life and i think uh, there will be nothing more Uh, nothing more interesting, nothing more uh, detail, and nothing more interesting uh, to definitely uh, in terms of living one's own life with something new every day. With, you know, engagement with something uh, fresh every moment. So it's a it's a great learning curve throughout uh, life. Life, life, and its environment. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, can I just interrupt for a second? Sunil, sir, we are unable to hear you properly. Uh, probably because of the microphone or the the speaker. I think. Just give me one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, is it better now? Yes, yes, perfect. Yeah. Yes, a lot better, sir. Yeah. so i had just said that uh, we um, l stands for life and l stands for landscape and landscape is something which deals with life and its environment so uh, it's a great learning and uh, and an engaging life that you lead when you delve into something which is uh, related to life itself so uh, the other very interesting thing about landscape is that landscape lies within landscape so when we talk about uh, designed landscape it always exists within a larger realm within a larger setting which is also landscape and therefore there is a continuum between different scales at which we operate so we 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 kind of uh, design our immediate environment we live in a larger environment we inhabit a planet and we are part of a universe so all these aspects of landscape link from the smallest to the uh, to the, the most uh, effective part of how the entire system of life is run on the planet so i think i this is what landscape means to me of course there can be many ways of looking at what is landscape architecture and uh, to to quickly delve into one simple definition of landscape architecture is to be able to have the opportunity and the humility to deal with everything outside of the envelope that we live within so everything outside the built realm is is the responsibility of this uh, profession called landscape architecture which looks at not only planning design and uh, management but also conservation of an entire natural system that enables life to live in so that is what landscape architecture broadly implies thank you i think right is said by me sir i think even personally for me landscape is sort of a fabric in which you tend to weave many things together and then create that kind of I mean, that kind of designs or that kind of story which has various different components to look at more interesting thing i think uh, harsh sir what Uh, what is your view about landscape architecture how do you define it how how do you visualize it i think i completely agree with sunil but uh, just to add to the point is 
uh, in a very casual sense, uh, landscape is definitely not a gardening, which is misunderstood by a lot of people. No, so actually, the landscape uh, to me it's a uh, you know extension of uh, you know an architectural building. So it is basically designing of your environment. It is to do with the de designing and uh, studying the environment and uh, which surrounds your uh, your built environment. You know? So, if in a very uh, layman's language, if I have to tell, uh, uh, something can be just a uh, you know a beach, and something can be a promenade. So, uh, just a beach uh, transforming into a promenade. I think the transformation of the spaces with the help uh, and how does that happen is with the, you know, uh, proper, profit, uh, you know, um, uh, practice of like designing environment, basically. That's the entire science goes behind it. And that's what you call it as a landscape architecture. How, how, how would you like to add to it? Uh, um. So, you know, I only would like, because the major you know, aspects being covered by both the sir, I would only like to add that, you know, um, nurturing uh, the unbuilt along with the built is what makes landscape architecture uh, what it is today. And uh, of course, it is very, very important to uh, see everything holistically, not just as architecture, architecture and landscape as outdoors only, they need to gel together and uh, they need to also reciprocate to the specific land, to the specific ecology of that particular space. So uh, the response to you know, that particular land parcel along with you know, many different aspects involved uh, environmentally is what you know, makes landscape architecture a very interesting designing you know, uh, realm. So I, I think the first point clarifies one fact that landscape architecture is a very diverse and is a very vast field. And and I mean, the more, how much we add, it is all, it's going to be always less. So the next topics, I think we are going to touch upon various scales of uh, architecture, various scales of design. And I think the best possible uh, way to go about the discussion is you know we can you know participate and initiate uh, our all our uh, participation in those topics so uh, what we are going to do now is we, we're going to graduate from like small scales to uh, urban scale so we have like along with the uh, kamlaja i think kamlaja they have shortlisted a few questions or topics for discussion so next we are moving on to uh, discussing about community housing schemes because now we, our society is basically densely weaved into a, with a very very dense social structure. So how the role of landscape architecture or urban greens come into uh, community housing schemes? So um, I think uh, who you can take uh, initiative. I think Deepthi, we can start with you. What is the role of landscape architecture or landscape architects in community housing schemes? So I think uh, we play a very, very vital role, you know, as important as an architect would. Uh, architect would build up a space and, you know, the outdoors is the responsibility, primarily the responsibility of a landscape architect. So uh, what is most important is to cater, you know, we as landscape architects have to make sure that we cater to all the end users you know which is which is like a you know age group which has an age group from you know toddlers to the senior citizens so uh, you know when you're living in a community and uh, the community needs to cater all the age groups and it is important that you know how uh, you put them together so it's important that you know we uh, place uh, you know the seniors along with just an example if i can say so place the senior citizens with in their comfort zone, the space needs to be accessible, the space needs to be, you know, content in itself. Uh, similarly, you need to reciprocate to a teenager where, you know, they can have their own uh, flexibility of using the space to their own imagination. So we can only give them a playground, we can only give them a base 
and uh, we can only give them a setup where they can use the spaces as per their own exploration, which is important. Uh, we, at the same time, we need to make sure that the space is comfortable enough uh, so that it caters to the end users. Um, it needs to be beautiful because this is what is going to, you know, really help you, uh, you know, mentally. It just soothes your mind. It 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 refreshes yourself. So it's important. So in the community planning, uh, of course, you need to make sure the end users are comfortable. At the same time, the places are accessible. The places are clean and uh, neatly defined. It needs to be pedestrian friendly. It needs to be drivable, you know, property. It needs to take care of a toddler cycle. So yes, I mean, there are many aspects to the whole of the community planning when it comes to landscape architecture. So basically, we are we are actually catering to the various stakeholders of society. That's I think uh, we have different functions. We have different amenities that can be you know used for all these stakeholders because everyone, every uh, as every uh, society, every person has a different usage of a particular space. So I think that that way. So uh, how uh, Harsha, how can you uh, how can you describe in community housing? How can landscape play a role? I think uh, uh, human being uh, basically or uh, naturally is, is a social animal. So the uh, more and more now we are building complexes. We are building large complexes of millions of square feet. Uh, so at one place you have like thousand flats, two thousand apartments. So but naturally uh, these landscape spaces they becomes breakout spaces. They become the uh, social gathering spaces, uh, they become a neighborhood spaces. So they are essential and very much uh, they have to be there. Uh, we are no longer now building uh, or at least in a metro cities or uh, urban cities, we are not making singular buildings or singular houses. You know? uh, other part of the country or a ruler part of the country, they still have that uh, singular house. But in metros and urban centers, I think that trend is long gone. So for example, if you see, uh, and now, uh, especially with the COVID and all these uh, uh, post COVID things, you know, uh, there is a, we, people are anticipating that uh, like COVID in future, they'll, there might be more of these diseases or these uh, things will be uh, more often. So, you know, you, there is a need for all those things. Uh, there are there are needs to, I mean, there are bubble spaces, there are, uh, you know, all these kinds of things. So I think uh, what we require is that, uh, and uh, as uh, I think previous uh, person also speak about, they are very essential for the mental health, you know, stress reduction. We are right now into a very fast-paced life. Uh, uh, probably eight to six, nine to five job kind of a thing. People, there are a lot of stresses. We are also, you know, IT world. So we need to get disconnected from, you know, a technology. So I think these are the spaces like parks, the walks, health issue. Uh, I mean, these things reduces the stress, anxieties, and so on and so forth. So I think these are the spaces where they are just very much accessible by each and everyone. And they are uh, accessible. I mean, no, uh, I mean, uh, in these spaces, uh, you know, uh, earlier we used to have the singular houses and we used to have a large playground. Now those are all divided into your neighborhood. So, you know, uh, children don't need to cross the roads. There is a security uh, also aspect uh, taken care of uh, while designing these spaces. So I think they are very much an uh, essential part of today's uh, uh, architectural and urban plan. So, uh, Sunit sir, like, is it like, are we moving from <coughs> what is being done to what should have been done? I mean, have we reduced that gap in what is the ideally a landscape design or a landscape scheme for a community housing should should be? So, is th there was a huge gap. And have we reduced that gap in terms of design or we are yet to achieve that thing? Uh, this is, uh, this is, this cannot be a collective uh, a question that 
you know can be answered uh, for a society i think it is mm-hmm. it is more to do with an individual and when many individuals do things in their own realms then it becomes naturally collective so uh, the answer to what you've asked is not a very easy or a direct uh, answer to give yeah. but uh, i would also like to add some points regarding housing particularly and also as a reaction to uh, what we've been uh, speaking about uh, one of the dangers of a forum like this can be that uh, speakers tend to uh, create a sense of competition between mm-hmm. let's say for instance here between architecture and landscape architecture mm-hmm. and i think this is a very unhealthy trend trend to mm-hmm. look at it in that sense uh, in fact you know uh, if you if you want to change we are all architects here we understand the idea of perspective we understand the idea of scale now uh, in one instance at a particular scale one may feel that buildings are objects in landscape while at the same time from another perspective one may realize or one may experience landscape as an extension to an indoor space right so it depends on where we are looking from and what is our perspective in a larger sense the important point here is that as human beings are into this realm of spatial arts we should drop these silos we should absolutely look at all our uh, uh, all our complexes and cities and anything to do with uh, human intervention as a cohesive whole and when that is said then the other thing that comes out of there is that uh, now i'll like to draw a parallel b- between how we sometimes engage in architectural design and therefore as an extension in any other design so architectural design when we if we all recall we've been teaching we've also studied land, the uh, architecture in our own and uh, we have referred to something called space standards always remember the new forts and all yes. those good old times now if you look at the uh, new forts it gives you various uh, various spaces and various objects and it gives those to you in a diagrammatic format there is a danger that we start conceiving that diagram as a design and then design is nothing but putting together of such objects which may have just arisen out of a functional anthropometric or an ergonomic issue mm-hmm. and because these are all perfect in their own sense answer their own anthropometric naturally they would not have very much to do with each other because they are so perfect in themselves that they they don't see a common ground they don't gel with each other likewise just when we thought about components of design in outdoors of a housing when we said that there are community spaces there are spaces for elders there are spaces for playing there are spaces to do this and that etc now all these also have diagrams all these also have their own anthropometric however what is important to understand is that we should start looking at landscape as an experience and the focus should be taken away from simply being amenity oriented to being a thematic destination in itself we need to be a destination we need to give an experience that means that amenities cannot be directly transferred as space standards and as uh, the given so called traditional list by a developer rather one has to pick and choose very carefully that in this theme and in this context how can something mold into another form or something do the work of two 
and have a multiple purpose. That's a very important aspect to think about. Yes. When you said bridging yes. gaps, then this is a gap yes. that we need to bridge. Yes. Exactly. And the second gap that I would like to talk about, which needs to be really bridged, is that there is a tendency of falling prey to images, of falling prey to uh, things that we have been looking at, and more so today, our clients have become very savvy. So they come with a prepared presentation and say, this is what I like. Yeah. Can you come and build this for me? Now, this is a very, very, uh, very, very difficult situation. But I think it's up to us as to how do we tide over this. Because if we keep doing this, yeah. if we keep sat sat uh, satiating the appetite of our client because of the images or visions that he has had for himself, then from architects, we should start renaming ourselves as facilitators. Hmm. So one of the roles of an architect is to probably imagine, isn't it? Rightly, and that rightly imagination rightly. must throw open something which is culturally rooted, which is suited to social norms where we are, yeah. which addresses our festivals, which okay. looks at the lifestyle, and so on. So I think there are many, many things to be talked about. We'll, we'll rightly, take it further up. Please continue. <laughs> rightly said, Sunil, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, ne I think next thing what we want to touch upon is few heavy words like urban fabric, <laughs> landscape architecture and sustainability. I am not going to portray any question on that but yes I want to know all of your like views on these two because recently I think day before yesterday or yesterday we have been announced in the most populous country in the world. We have surpassed China. There's immense pressure in terms of population. There's a lot of urban urban development happening happening in the country. There's a lot of facilities being added on. We are also simultaneously increasing the population and also working on our designs and working on all the amenities, infrastructure, whatever. So, and the third thing which has also been introduced is sustainability. So how how we can be a part of that or how we have something to contribute to that thing. I would like to uh, someone to take an initiative and speak on this, please. Um, who can? So, Ankur, I think, uh, let me just, you know, start with yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, the point that you, you know, raised that, you know, we've become the most populated country and, uh, you know, this is a little scary um, because mm -hmm. uh, the unchecked urban sprawl, you know, that's happening the mm -hmm. haphazard development that is happening and we've seen these uh, uh, and we've also seen that in the past you know the that it has severe um, you know hazards the environmental hazards that we have seen because of this unplanned uh, you know uh, extension that is happening um, we've also seen so much of influx in the urban areas from the rural and also a little reverse during the covid time mm -hmm. Yes. But, uh, you know, the, the flooding, uh, the water pollution, the air pollution, you know, overconsumption of the energies and resources that we've seen uh, are a very, uh, it's a red flag. And, you know, the most important thing as planners, as architects, I mean, we need to sensitize the idea that, you know, uh, we need to be very strict about how we should be, you know, planning our uh, spaces, whether it is rural or, you know, a satellite city or an urban area. Uh, I mean, there should be uh, very strict uh, measures, if I can put it like that, that, you know, uh, instead of going in a very random way, um, we should try and work it out with the planners to understand how much a land can sustain and, you know, try and work out what and how can we plan things, question ourselves whether you know the fabric that is not being addressed needs to be addressed in a very systematic format uh, having said that of course it is not one person's you know purview it is a holistic development by a lot of 
you know uh, people not just planners architects but also government policies and etc but yeah i mean the the fabric that you mentioned the landscape fabric the urban fabric needs to be tied together yeah i just want to start with that i i i think we are talking about a collaborative effort that's what you you i focus upon so uh, and so har sir what do you want to say about this so i think uh, just now i read somewhere is uh, by 2030 i think 40% of uh, indian population will start living in urban areas and i think that is now this is not irre- irreversible or uh, we have to accept this facts you know and uh, what is going to come we need to start uh, plan planning for it we need to start taking initiative towards it i totally agree with both the panelists they also got a, a point which is uh, you know uh, framing probably a, a landscaping policy policy as a uh, you know landscaping as a policy by the government with the help of designers and urban designers i think we have seen in so many abroad also i mean if you go to uh, for example us you know you have a house and in front of the house there is a lawn and you need to maintain the lawn if you don't maintain the lawn you are you know that is often you know so it's a you know these initiatives i mean why because th- these are the things the landscape uh, features you know the art the material the hardscape softscape the plantation the trees i think these are all starts uh, giving identity to, to that space aesthetic sense amongst the people uh, you know and i think landscape is also very much uh, you know it should be also in in terms of urbanization now not two two cities or two urban center can be similar i mean you can't have a, a, a landscape a landscape or a, ski, a, a, a landscape of a kashmir in kerala and kerala landscape in kashmir right so you know the holistic study because nowadays i am seeing a trend trend because we are doing doing a lot of pan india architectural work so you know the developers and all these people you know they see something here and there and they just want to copy it you know they just want to, okay can we do something this in our uh, residential premises or in our project so you know we need to really guide them we need to you know make them understand that you know with a landscape it is a living thing you know it depends upon the weather the soil condition the water availability there are so many factors you know it is about the uh, you know types of trees the foliage the color of bo- uh, bloom you know there are so many factors which go through it and uh, i think uh, i think uh, i read a long time back that uh, when there was a, a discussion was going on with a uh inspiration from kyoto for kashi i i i had i had, uh, I had a discussion and i had read through that kyoto has a policy you know landscape policy you know uh, uh, it is a really i mean the government there is really studied the planners have put in lot of efforts to communicate certain points you know because kyoto it is not like a it's a very ancient city but if you see it it has a modern appeal to it also it has everything as a modern i mean if you just google it probably you will see all those pitch roof and everything but if you start digging more you will start seeing is a urban yes. setting, you know so i think uh, i think landscape are, policies i think you is saying that landscape policy should be yes, there i i think the Because, high tech, yeah I, i think there are there are many layers there are infrastructure there is uh, population there is development there is also natural resources and biodiversity what about planting species what about all the rest flora and fauna which is there all all around exactly so is there a way, is there a way that you know all this thing is tied tied together and how as landscape architects we play yeah. a role sunil yeah. sir there is a word of sustainability on your shoulders now so how you can throw light on that that word yeah 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 so um... you actually talked of three words and suddenly threw one of them at me but <laughs> no, the the fact no, about sustainability to... is that it 
cannot be answered in itself yes so i want you to i mean sir you can you are the better judge sir i can not guide so, you in that so, so so since you said urban urban fabric landscape architecture and sustainability now you see uh, many times what happens is that uh, in various disciplines words from the english dictionary are carried on mm-hmm. to mean something or to elude something which is not its direct meaning for instance fabric when we talk of a fabric if we just look at fabric and google it or go to the dictionary we would uh, look at a piece of cloth right but when we are talking about the urban fabric let's understand what quality of the fabric was such that this word decided to come into the dictionary of a specialized dictionary of architecture mm. so the fabric has a pattern mm. and that pattern essentially to begin with comes from its weave and waft mm. so there are these two directions of threads and these two directions uh, come together and that weave is what results into what we call a usable piece of cloth so here there is a, a quality of coexistence a quality of weaving one thing into another so as to create a meaningful object so as to create a meaningful value right so this urban fabric is nothing but a call to us to understand that there are several factors at play when we look at complex environments and on top of that when we look at fabrics in general we see that fabrics are also painted upon they are also embellished they have prints on them right so that talks about identity that talks about uh, something special which is different from the rest and it also talks about edges between the print and the plain so which means that it talks about some kind of an edge between what we are calling urbanity and what we call peri urban or what we call rural right so these terms are very very important to understand if sustainability was to be uh, fathomed now uh, the first, foremost point we need to think about is that how did so when we are saying urban so how did cities come about cities originated based on the settings within which these nestled any city you take it had a, a core and that core historically speaking resulted in that place in that form because of the geography and that geography and nature identified the need for the kind of form that the urban development took place so the relationship between the geography and the urban pattern which is seen often through strands of landscape that link the setting to the inside is the basis of preserving the quality of uh, urban character when we are talking about development and expansion and the role of landscape in defining the structure of an urban development as a sensitive example of landscape urbanism can be understood from the fact that landscape architecture has a virtue of acting like a glue like something which can stick things which are not originally seemingly meant for each other so landscape so, so when you when you look at pretty site plans often you see that there is a flow in a site plan it starts to look very pretty it's nicely colored it's drawn well it has you know but what is it that has stitched it or stitched various co- components together it is the sense of geometry and the understanding of order mm. 
and this geometry and order is existential in a small tenement as well as in a city and as well as in a natural setting certain expressions of this which are particularly to do with landscape find places in the city for instance if i if one, one was to just talk about the role of landscape in a city at its broadest level it is inclusion of nature in a stylized form within the human habitat and because the nature has been pulled as an arena for life into the city then that nature has to live that nature has to thrive that cannot be artificially kept there and given antibiotics to be able to survive that is where sustainability comes into picture so sustainability is a very complex uh, matrix which deals with every professional in their own sense of responsibility for us for landscape architects it may, may seem that the primary aspect of sustainability is to do with climate geography and ecology but for an agriculturist let's say it would it, it would be to do with the agricultural practice and methods for a technology uh, driven manufacturer for a cell phone or for a uh, for a manufacturer of a printer it would do sustainability would do with the responsibility of emissions in the manufacturing process and the disp disposal of the used stuff right so yes. in many many different ways sustainability is a virtue or a responsibility that one gives to oneself it is not something which can be defined as uh, uh, as something which is uh, uh, which is in a box that can be invoked and then every activity of yours would become uh, very respected it's in fact a very difficult uh, art to actually look at spatial spatial aspect of architecture and bind it with the sustainable aspect of it but we should not forget that there are these two poles and these poles are not apart these exist within the sensibility and the way of approaching the problem so i'll speak on this further and through another question but i, I thought that was it no yeah, i think you have put it beautifully sir um okay we are moving now to a more personalized thing about the design process so in terms of design process there are various components and there are various ideologies there are various thoughts behind the landscape design process so i want i want you to you know like um like a very important factor is you can say our you no know, our culture or our tradition and our heritage that plays a very important pa part in the design process so what drives you what drives each of you or each of us in that process what is the most um, important part or how do you pursue a design project in terms of landscape um can i can i start with uh, sunisari from you only what is the first i what is the first step of a landscape design process that you indulge in or just how do you pursue a project so uh, broadly speaking there are two very uh, very accepted methods of design one that lays a large emphasis on an analytical approach where analysis leads to shape and form where analysis leads to the product where the process is something that is highly respected and that uh, uh, results into what we call a product there's another uh, broadly accepted way of looking at design which is the first principles or the intuitive way 
of looking at uh, arriving at a product. But I think the two cannot exist in isolation. In mm -hmm. fact, both are extremely important. I would rather like to say that I would, uh, for, for if, if, if I was to tell you about uh, my way of approaching things, let's say you go to a doctor and you tell him that, you know, these are your symptoms or this is what you are facing. There could be two doctors. One doctor may come with me, tell you that here are a list of 10 in investigations that you need to do. So please get them done and let's meet next week. And then when you go next week with all those investigations, when you are half worried and half dead after uh, trying to peruse the net to understand what your results meant, then he overlays all those, correlates one to the other, and then comes out with a prognosis and say, this is your, this is, this is for you. This is your life now. And this is what you have. So here is my remedy for it. So I would say the analysis led to a remedy or a solution to a problem. Okay. I have also seen doctors who say, oh, this is what you are facing. Let me touch you, feel you, look at you, look at various things, parameters, ask you various questions, and then tell you, they'll come and tell you, I think this is what you suffer from. Why don't you undertake this test to confirm the diagnosis? And therefore, the intuition of that doctor and his experience led to an end result, which was further confirmed with a process. Mm -hmm. Design is also very similar. Mm -hmm. So in design, we also have an intuition of what is right for that context. And there is a process which justifies that intuition or makes that intuition fall apart when you apply yourself. So to me, the process is something which is applied onto an intuitive framework. Unless there is primary imagination and intuitiveness, a process cannot lead very far because design is more than some of its parts. Mm. So all the sum, all, all the parts have to be summed up, not simply arithmetically, but based on an idea, a germ, an intuitive imagination. So in terms of approaching a project, one of the things that I also look at is this whole idea of primordial questions. For example, when, if I was to illustrate, so let's say the first question is what? So what is the project? When I say what is the project, a simple and a not so profound rather way of looking at it is that, oh, this is an engineering college. Oh, this is a commercial complex. Oh, this is a retail center, etc. But the real what that I'm talking about is that what does it stand for in the given context? What is special about it? What does it signify? And that begins to make my mind run. Similarly, I think that's uh, yeah, I think that that's the valid start off point. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I would also like to uh, ask, I, let's have like a joint discussion on it. I would also like to ask deeply, how do you pursue a design process? Sorry, sir, sorry to cut you in between, but oh, I would like to have it uh, like a joint discussion on it, on this. Very interesting. So, Ankur, we, uh, you know, when we start, when we get a project and we need to analyze and start with, you know, the process, the first and the most important thing is for whom are we designing? You know, the outdoors are, uh, are is going to be experienced by a set of people or is it going to be, a, you know, used by, a, it's a public space or it's a private space, it's an office space. So, it's important for whom you are designing. And then, you know, once we know that, okay, this is a set of people who are going to use it and this is how, you know, this is the duration when they are going to use it, what time are they going to use, maximum time, 
which is the duration that they will be how much is the time that they will be spending you know in the outdoors uh, this also helps us analyze that you know okay so this is what we should be you know stressing upon this is the time of the day that they will be experiencing you know the the outdoors so you know asking us ourselves a lot of questions uh, you know makes us come down to a program as to you know the end users this is the duration this is the amount of time that they will be spending outdoors are we addressing you know uh, a basic programming that they might indulge into uh, once we answer you know we sort of kind of formulate the answers for ourselves we get into the process of you know interrelating the programming and you know then interrelating how we can uh, merge the indoors and the outdoors the, the cohesive uh, you know uh, element which is required of the for the architecture interiors and the landscape is then you know considered in the designing uh, one most important thing that we also look into is the experience you know whether it is sensory experience whether it is a visual thing we want to see something we don't want to see something is everything carved around a, a, in the third dimension uh, you know landscape is never seen in 2d it is something that needs to be experienced you know whether you see it or not passively or actively you are going to experience that thing so you know what what do you want to emphasize on what is the passive activity that you need to you know you need the end users to get into yeah so you know this is how the process starts and once we start getting the answers to it we kind of try to formulate so, so, there, so, so there are various layers there are various questions in our mind one of the most important thing which i think uh, is the timeline the deadlines which uh, which are there i mean it's sitting there the deadline so her sir how do we address the issue of uh, all these uh, design process and the, the deadline so i think ankur uh, uh, so we at pentaspace we are a multidisciplinary firm so we are doing from large project to medium size project to small project one thing i have learned in my life is that even if you are as a principal architect you we can have a broad broad vision about the project but we can be uh, you know a champion at everything so the best thing what we follow is that we have we are working with a 8 to 10 uh, landscape architects and uh, i am very proud only one or two are from singapore rest all my colleagues are from india because i believe in indian when i'm working predominantly in my country and my climate uh, my people are the best judge to understand every aspect of landscape architecture what we start doing is that uh, before even if even a project even if a client has discussed a first meeting project we start evaluating that project with various a uh, group of my friends the landscape architects and we start we uh, i always tell them that just come up with few ideas or your vision or something with that and whatever the best suitable to my vision we go ahead with that so i always suggest client to involve a landscape architect or a take a landscape architect on board from day one i'll give you an example we are do, we were doing we are doing right now currently a bungalow in pavna and uh, pavna is a very heavy uh, contoured site so on a day one i involved a landscape architect because i wanted to know the feedback from him even i wanted to have a feedback in my landscape design we do as a architect study the climate the sun path the wind analysis and everything and everything but a specialized input always makes a difference placing of units placing of orientation of building cutting filling you know uh, pavna is a uh, when the things came up to me pavna is a very and that particular location is a very grassy very grassland that is what i got a input from landscape designer at my first site visit otherwise while going through the that winding roads i was imagining very you know beautiful very i will have a good trees this that 
but this is what happens and this is you along with the specialized people you get educated and when these inputs come from day one the timelines and everything also start because because the landscape designer is on board all these consultants are on board on day one so it becomes very streamlining and every stage of a project becomes very streamlined and deadlines are very easily met nothing happens or there is no you know a lot of places i have uh, i have also taken up a uh, project which are midway and there are and i was surprised that there was no landscape architect appointed even in that stage of design development i mean i was like later on you will require so many things uh, you know water supply irrigation plumbing drainage how are you going to manage it i mean it's going to be difficult task and then it, it becomes you know very far i mean it just become very ha- half hazard thing uh, and you know in that project also you somehow you start get stretched unnecessary and the best of the design input doesn't come so i think my methodology is to involve a person since day one believe in him give up your broad vision to him give him your inputs all the data he requires and what is your vision and what your thought of it and accept what he is saying without any uh, you know judgmental about it or being arrogant about your own things and accept it and yeah. i think that just solves all the problem thank thank you sir i think the design methodology and the design process of landscape is very you know very it's a very deep topic uh i would like to move on now because uh, harsh sir you have mentioned that you are already uh, got you are already collaborating with land uh, designers from all over the world internationally so leaving that uh, leaving that topic aside we want we have to discuss what is the scenario of landscape architecture in india currently and how are we moving ahead in future so just uh, i mean what i this is my personal opinion what i have seen currently is landscape architects now getting more involved in the projects at urban level at of course the personal the the smaller projects are a different issue but even for infrastructure projects and even for urban level projects planning projects you know landscape designers and architects are being consulted so i would like to know that and also uh what is the scenario the current scenario of landscape architecture and how you pursue it and what is going to be the future we can't predict the future but still there is a kind of a vision for the future so deeply how would you see the current thing and what is the future which you see ankur i think uh, you know we are in a better position than what we used to be you know, if i see yesterday i'm be a better today and i'm very sure that you know things look better for landscape architects in the future the reason i say so is that you know, uh because it was initially when we you know started practicing it was uh, our responsibility to even explain an architect that what is our you know scope of work exactly so there were many architects who would really not be sure of what is the involvement i mean today also we need to brief up many many clients about you know what is uh what are the uh, areas that we touch upon and you know what do we do because many people are still not aware of the things but they at least know that you know involvement of a landscape architect at an initial, initial stage is far more better and uh, there are only a handful of people you know who kind of uh, appreciate the idea that you know having them from the day one is as important as having an architect for the for the project so uh, you know as you mentioned that uh, we are getting involved in larger scale projects urban scale projects yeah we are but uh, uh, i mean still there's a very very long road for us to go because um, that's that's happening but not as at the scale we are you know developing so i think the the ratio is not really a very happy one i think the way we are uh, you know urbanization is into the picture i think you know similarly the involvement of the landscape architecture <coughs> with the uh, development is uh, needs to be in hand in hand which is uh, still lagging i guess but yeah i i'm hoping that we would be better in the future 
Okay, I think the future, a very important part of the future is education. So, how the education in landscape architecture is going to evolve, or what is the scenario currently? Uh, I think Sunil sir, you you are a part of uh, SPA and SP Delhi. We all know you have been there for long. How do you see the education and landscape architecture? What is your view about it? What is the uh, what is the way forward in that? Uh, well, I have not taught landscape uh, architecture formally at the School of Planning and Architecture for okay. over ten years now. I think, uh, and I have been teaching urban design and architecture. So, okay. uh, but that does not because I, I I said right at the beginning that these silos need to be dropped. Yes. Uh, but uh, here I would like to bridge the two questions about yeah. the future of landscape architecture yes. and the landscape architecture education because that's where. Uh, the, so first and foremost, I would like to raise a red flag mm -hmm. for all of us who are actually running our private practices as landscape architects. We must be aware that there is a huge gap between demand and supply. There are far too many projects. RFPs are raining down every day. But the offices do not have capacity to keep pace with the amount of development happening in the country. And one of the primary reasons for that is lack of resources, rather human resources, who would uh, aggressively like to play the role of a designer. And somewhere in the educational parlance, as well as in the general uh, way of looking at the profession, I see that there is a slight dichotomy that is that has been building up for some time now. And that dichotomy I would like to uh, put forward with two two themes or two questions. Is landscape architecture a spatial art which deals with design and organization and management of space in a responsible manner? Or is landscape architecture a tool to solve the ecological problems faced by the planet? These two questions are something which we need to deeply think about. Somewhere down, there is a kind of a confusion where, you see, it is easy to get into research. It is easy to get theoretical. It is easy to... Uh, bring about data and process it and show figures and then go about amelioration techniques to learn how to improve the environment. But if landscape architecture could only work on that premise, then the aspect of art or the aspect of architecture will go away from landscape. And this is where those of us who are practicing and facing a resource crunch in terms of capability crisis, I would call it. This is where we need to hit the nail on the head. So are we gearing up to this global increase in the need for landscape architects? And are we ready with, uh, uh, do we have the capability to imagine, draw, represent, and produce documentation to be able to bring about a project? This is some question that we need to basically ask ourselves as landscape architects. So why is it that there are tons and tons of schools offering education in landscape architecture. And today there are, I don't know the exact data, but I'm sure somebody may have calculated the number of landscape architects graduating every year. It would be an interesting exercise to see. 
the next interesting data to call out would be that what are they doing after studying landscape architecture so somewhere it seems that the education has started to feed into itself so i study so that i can teach and then i teach so that i can produce more teachers and this has got into a rigmarole it is not bringing forth the talent into the profession and this is further uh, the, the problem is further aggravated by several uh, institutions where uh, there is a wedge which divides practice and teaching and i don't think that these two can be separated so i would say that regarding landscape education this is one important point to really uh, uh, deeply delve into one more point i would like to also add here is that landscape architecture education now getting into education per se first i really related the future and the landscape education prospect but now getting into the landscape education so if we correctly understand it there are several streams into landscape so there are earth sciences there are life sciences there is history there is art and art appreciation mm -hmm. and finally there is something that is called architecture it is very important for all the specialists who teach various streams of life sciences and earth sciences and philosophy and history and theory to look at the application of it and stitch it together for the students to be able to comprehend that how is this subject relevant to me or how does it apply itself in a real life situation so this is also another gap in landscape architecture education which is also there in architectural education for instance for a structural engineer to be able to speak an architectural language and inspire an architect to understand structural mechanics is a very difficult task for somebody to teach plumbing and electrical and really uh, enable the students not to look at it as something that they have to pass theoretically to be able to complete that year but rather look at these as tools that aid in design or as sometimes thematic springing points from where design could could emerge so this capability in teachers is something that we need to constantly polish how to speak that language and last but not the least an architectural education is incomplete without role models so when i said that uh, there is a wedge that has divided practice in in the profession and the uh, theoretical aspect of teaching the problem is that when you are a student and you are looking or, or or you are getting taught by somebody you do not know what that somebody or what is that what is it that that somebody has created out of his own life so there is no inspiration to follow and when we go to smaller towns where professional practice is not very widely uh, prevalent the problem is further aggravated so in delhi in bombay you would get a lot of visiting professors who would come about and there would be a healthy mix of theoreticians and practical uh, teachers but in smaller towns that problem is slightly larger so i have these three points to offer in terms of education thank you sir um i want to know uh, like from aditi and her sir again if someone is we have a lot of uh, students young graduates and professionals who are a part of our uh, discussion today someone is inclined towards landscape architecture want to do landscape architecture want to study what what we have how can we uh, how can we guide them how can we i mean what is your point of view for them uh, so uh, ankur i think uh, you know it's important i mean as an architecture student you are only uh, introduced to what landscaping is uh, but you never get into the depth of it because the way the curriculum has been designed 
so uh, you know i would really advise anybody who is interested in landscape architecture to first explore the profession you know, get into uh, you know, the training get learn uh, from an architecture firm get into the architecture firm see if this really interests you uh, of course there is a big disconnect between what what we practice and what we learn as a landscape uh, you know in landscape architecture uh, i mean if you are fortunate enough then probably you will be able to apply the information that you study in landscape architecture during your practice but that's a different topic altogether but you no know, i would only really uh, ask any architecture students or anyone who is really interested to first be sure because uh, you know it's a very interesting uh, you know subject with lot of layers in it but uh, unless and until you explore you know from the practical point uh, you know you may not be very sure of it so i think my only and most an important suggestion is that get into the practice see how it is designed see what are the aspects see uh, the ideology that goes into it uh, you know experience different uh, spaces you know, only probably then you will get a clarity before you get in even if before you plan to get into yeah. landscape architecture you know uh, course yeah. uh, harsh sir how how you want to give a heads up to people who want to get into landscape so in general what we do is that uh, since last two years i think uh, quite a lot of my batchmates are now into the colleges and they are teaching and they are heading departments so in covid what happened is that because of covid batches and everything online teaching uh, when we had a discussion they said you are into the practice and likewise other my friends so what we have done is that we have specialized a internship program which is to my with my experience and my uh, thing i mean there is a obviously a this uh, it's not a full proof but it is what effort from my side or my company what we have done is that for penta space there is a internship program and we start as uh, she also said that there is a vast difference between the theoretical or the what you are being taught and what is in practice so what i always suggest and as a visiting faculty whenever i go i whenever i interact with students i tell them that you start you start uh, before even internship even if you are getting a time you join a office try to understand what is going on just be around just be watchful just watch it there are lots of people we allow people uh, because it, we feel it's our responsibility Uh, to give them the access you know uh, so i uh, we allow people to come visit our offices uh, and they can also be part of discussion they are not actively involved into the projects and everything for second year or third year but later on that obviously everything happens so with that yeah. what happens is that uh, uh, with our program there are our set of uh, Uh, design aspects design rules i would say uh, you know we explain to them and we so for me for our side we always say uh, for architecture there is a minimum which is this is 5 years of education and 5 years of a uh, professional practice this is a minimum what you should do before starting anything on your own you know don't just start jumping into the profession immediately as you pass out or just take up a, a random experience at one or two years and then you jump out spend time you need to get understand you need to understand all the aspects get educated do self study and then once you are confident enough then you start doing it i think yeah, uh, as as uh, i think professor also earlier said there is a vast requirement of landscape architect he was absolutely bang on about the rfp we are feeling the shortage uh, my uh, consultant they are refusing telling we are overloaded we can't take any more jobs so you know obviously there is i would definitely encourage uh, students to you know take up landscape uh, architecture as a stream and really get into it because india 
requires i mean the amount of urbanization sure. development is happening immense immense opportunity are right in india and it is going to be for there for next 20 25 years to come so i think we need good consultants we need good people good practices and we need innovative solutions more and more uh, to come yes so um i think thank you arsh sir and thank you everyone for uh, guiding into this topic i think a lot of introspection is required a lot of observation is required before uh, getting into landscape architecture and uh, i think thank you to architects diary and kamalaja that we have taken up i think the it's your first session on landscape architecture and like you have seen uh, by the discussion we what we were having it's not enough ankur ankur sorry add i want to add one thing one of yeah. my experience personal yeah. experience of that flora fauna what you spoke about at urban level yeah i think, uh, what we also require is more of these kind of a dialogues dialogues with lot of society people yeah. i will give you one example i was also part of it if you remember the clean up of versova beach mm -hmm. by afzal and other people they started it i was also i also participated uh, in that and uh, uh, from garbage the beach was uh, you know actually realized and then after few years i mean we saw the turtles baby turtles i mean that was a very when i saw that the baby turtles you know going into the sea i mean i was i i was in tears you know so i think that was something i was really part of it and what you spoke about flora fauna yeah yeah thank I you think, uh, uh, people's initiation is uh, always it yes. uh, and in india people's movement has always succeeded rather than uh, government you. policies government policies are probably they form the framework but the the more of a active participation of people's uh, movement is what we yes, absolutely thank, thank you harsh sir for uh, sharing that so uh, as i was continuing kamla ji we need yeah. i mean we need more sessions like this this is going to be a wonderful start and i i i thank you i thank sunit sir deepthi and harsh sir for a wonderful and of course this is this was my first time i was moderating a panel so please uh, yeah. if something this, it was a glitch so sorry from my side I apologize but i think it was a great discussion it was in depth we need to touch upon various of these topics i think in the in the next uh, sessions and uh, over to you kamla ja how you want to take it forward thank you for you a wonderful attempt thank you thank you sir thank you very much pleasure is ours good pleasure yes all together <laughs> yes Uh, i think uh, harsh sir uh, said something about the laws or uh, the regulations that the authorities have already uh, you know enforced but uh, sir i wanted to ask you this like are there any other regulations that you need like apart from the ones that are already there so do you think there should be uh, some other regulations that need to be uh, enforced like uh, how there are in uh, the foreign countries uh, where they get a fine and something i'm sure they would be here as well but uh, people hardly all of these days so we require we we need to get rid of compound wall design <laughs> <laughs> we require we require we have a framework but that is very broad and that's very at a uh, you can say it is a uh, environmental point of view mm -hmm. not from a particularly from landscape point of view. so landscape policy uh, i think government will not uh, wake up i think we need to give a proposal to government that this is what you require and that's how things will move mm -hmm. right right no totally agree and uh, i think the point that you mentioned where uh, people's movements like collective effort efforts i think they are the most successful ones where yeah. people join hands together and uh, work towards a greater you know uh, they see the greater goal uh, goal or the greater for the greater good and i think that is how a nation grows uh and uh, you know you uh, you mentioned your experience about the turtles so yeah. it resonated with me because uh, i feel the same when i am in uh, green spaces when i see green and i think dipti ma'am mentioned a point uh, about uh, mental health and wellbeing so uh, i would like for you to uh, elaborate on that because i think landscape uh, landscape architecture plays a major role in that so 
So I think Kamlaja, you know, it is a very happy thing to see something which is nicely structured and maintained. You know, it it just lifts you from within. You know, it's always nice, and then you start owning the space. So you know, uh, as Harshal mentioned about you know, uh, get people getting involved. People only start getting involved once they see that it is up to a certain level. Then you start owning the space. Then you start maintaining the space, and then you will not spoil that area. You know, you start kind of you know minding yourself. You start minding your kids. You know that it's a civic space, but that that space belongs to you. So that belonging needs to come from within, and that will only happen once. So it's a it's a cohesive relationship between you know the designers and the end users. So once you know you make something nice, people start enjoying it, and it also is appreciated. You start making better spaces. and people also will start enjoying and experiencing the spaces then you know it's a it 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 just helps you build from within so i think uh, it's just not the designers or it is not just the builders it is a team work mm-hmm. so whether it is the government making the policies or you know we as an individual trying to design something and uh, i think it should also be inculcated uh, you know from the schools Yeah. If not in all these schooling days, but at least from the architecture that you need to start, you know, a kind of feeling, uh, you know, a, a sense of responsibility to the spaces, to the outdoors. Right, definitely agreed. And uh, you know, uh, when you talk, yeah, Kamal, I want to add one more point. Sure. Uh, to give you a second example of why these people movement success happened. So my hometown is Panvel. so in panvel there was there is a uh, balladeshwar uh, lake so there is a balladeshwar temple and uh, besides there is a huge lake it's a huge lake uh, so probably 6 7 years back it was that lake was dead nothing was there i mean the even pe- the promenade was not there nothing was there and what we did is that with one of the uh, spiritual group uh, in uh, panvel Mm-hmm. and few our friends and when we were started this discussion about it we started cleaning the uh, this thing we just took a permission from uh, uh, panvel municipal corporation that we want to clean it up they gave us a permission we started cleaning up the entire thing the, mm-hmm. i think we were very small small part of it but i personally uh, uh, you know cleaned up i actually uh, 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 you know uh, uh, went inside the lake and we started cleaning up in couple of days lots of other people started uh, joining that thing within 8 days we cleaned up the entire lake in the month of may in the june that lake was full and people really started appreciating the the city people the panvel city people ki yaar this is what is this happened i mean we never saw this in last our 25 30 years they some old people remembered that are this uh, uh, year this was full and uh, and that's how and now if you see it government also saw the effort and saw everything and they saw the opportunity and they actually now developed the uh, promenade around it so now the lake has completely transformed mm-hmm. and it has got all the activities and st- stuff like that so i think this is a second example i just wanted to share it with all of you all quite a great and i feel very proud of it that uh, you were a part of i was it. part of these initiation and they are bearing the fruits and i could see the success at a very urban level yeah there is a there is a thank you congratulate for this amazing experiences that you had yourself and you've shared i think it's very inspiring <laughs> yeah, and there is a you know saying in hindi ek ek kar ek ek ke karne se farak padta hai so yeah. that is very true here. and uh, sunit sir uh, i would also like to you know just uh, when you were explaining I uh, actually thought like I wished I had a professor like you in my back in my college days because we just had uh, you know uh, one uh, one or two semesters where there was just one elective of uh, landscape architecture and it was like an overview of the entire uh, topic so now like listening to all this I think this is also uh, giving me a chance to uh, you know fulfill all of my wishes <laughs> the topics and the discussions that uh, we couldn't have back in our college days so i think i hope our uh, you know audience uh, and the readers as well uh, they would agree so i'm glad yeah definitely
that's a great thing uh, i think attributed to the architect's diary i think you're doing a wonderful job so that that's what making you happy <laughs> yeah yeah so it's it, it all it's all about you not any and not any one of us <laughs> yeah no no and uh, you know your years of experience i think it speaks a lot uh, i really appreciate it's very appreciable so yeah i think uh, yeah and uh, again a very like wonderful wonderfully done uh, moderation ankur sir and i think i talked to him over call before this and i said <laughs> this is a start so <laughs> thank you yeah uh, so but let us ask if the if any of the audience uh, if they have any questions uh, like we'll have a small question answer session if any of the audience uh, has any questions so you can unmute yourself and uh, ask away please um am i audible hello yes uh, yes can you please hi yes uh, my name is uh, nishal sevak and uh, first of all i would like to point out that the discussion was really insightful uh, it pointed out some things that i have never thought about before uh, so thank you all the speakers uh, i have a question ki uh, what are some of the examples in urban or uh, public realm that actually captures the essence of landscape architecture if we want to refer uh, a case study that is rooted to indian weather and climate and uh, landscape so what are some of the examples that you can ask us to refer like any project or a, uh, you know previously done project is that uh, yeah okay yeah yeah so if any of you all can uh, you know answer um i would like to answer this question so uh, recently uh, at earthscapes we you know we did this annual meet and you know uh, the team from ahmedabad was here in mumbai and we went around uh, you know seeing and observing some public spaces i would really like to mention uh, you know couple of projects uh, so where the where the, there is a uh, flyover at lower prayer and uh, the 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 project is called the green mine and the space which is a generally considered a dead space uh, below the flyover has been beautifully developed by studio pod and uh, i think this in uh, one more uh, foreign uh, consultant involved in it but uh, i think uh, what amazed me is uh, you know the, the the way the space was so lively it was uh, admits this very uh, highly traffic uh, road and yet the space was used there was a small library space where uh, i saw uh, you know the localites studying uh, there were uh, different uh, people different age groups so it was very interesting to see uh i think you know if you are in mumbai or are you from mumbai i'm not sure but uh, that is one good project that you know one should really experience uh which also falls into this uh, public realm and yet it is owned by the people this is exactly what we were discussing uh, some time back and it's a very beautiful example of that that's uh yeah that's actually really good and <clears throat> i think the next yeah, time i would like to add uh, i would like yeah, to add, uh, yeah. so uh, i am i am just checking this on the chat box for everybody who will be able to uh, get this publication hands on this publication this is called transforming urban landscape in india this was published by the national institute of urban affairs and uh, it's not in a hard copy format it's a soft copy you would i'm sure find it if you pull it out so this has a compendium of uh, uh, i think more than 100 uh, public realm landscape in the country so this could be a great example to look at so oh, thank you thank you for that amazing we'll definitely uh, check it out and uh, also share on our uh, platform yeah yeah thank you all right so i think uh, uh, i think we had one question yeah all right so yeah uh, that was quite an enriching uh, experience i would say like the past uh, one one and a half hours so uh, i i would like to thank again all of you for uh, you know coming here i i, I guess uh, you have a day of deepthi ma'am and uh, probably harsh sir as well so i really appreciate uh, you all coming down on a saturday evening and uh, 
this was a topic that uh, we all initially were uh, skeptical to uh, you know take further because uh, we didn't know how people would take it because generally people go ahead with the topics that are uh, you know that would add on to their own businesses and uh, majority of the people are now practicing uh, uh, you know interior design or uh, you know so but then that is where we uh, thought of stepping in because uh, essay topics lene se hi i think that the difference the right difference would start and i'm glad that you all were, were a part of it so thank you so much again and uh, we will come up with another interesting topic in the next uh, next edition of tad dialogue series and thank you so much again thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much have a great weekend you all yeah good bye thank you